Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this video we're going to be talking through a very important part of the pre-production process. We're going to be making style frames. So what is a style frame? Well, basically the style frame is meant to convey what the finished look of an animation is going to be. Whether you're working with 3D or 2D or some kind of compositing, you really want to convey to a client or the rest of the team what does this actually look like when it's going to be done. And you have to do that before you start actually doing things, or it can get very expensive. Especially in a client situation where you need someone to be bought in or to sign off on what you're actually doing. You want to get everybody on board, and a style frame is a great way to do that. Style frames can be illustrations, they can be renders, they can be something you actually create in the app you're going to use to do the animation, or they can be a little bit closer to concept drawings. What's important is that they convey the actual finished look of the thing before you have to start making it. Often you'll present a few style frames at a time to somebody. If your piece has big narrative beats in it, you probably want to show those large set pieces, those key pivotal moments. And if this is for a client piece, you may want to present several alternatives at once. So in this video, we're going to look at how we choose what we're going to represent in a style frame, how we're going to present that to clients, and then what to do about feedback and refining that process. So let's open up our project so far and get into it. Here are some images highlighting key moments moments of the project we've been working on for this pre-production series. But where did these come from? The point of the series is to illustrate that great motion design doesn't just spring fully formed, and no step really springs fully formed out of the creator's minds either. So, as we said in the intro, all of this started with a mood board. Well, if you watched that video, you'll know that even that started with other smaller parts that coalesced. We had to know why we're making this project, who we're making this project for, and then we could create a mood board, gathering together all of the things that are going to inspire this piece. And now we're going to take that visual information that we collected here, we're going to take that, we're going to use that to inform our style frames. So things to take away, we've got bright colors, I love simple geometry in here, I like some of the motion that we see in these examples, the representation of hands, tight framing, maybe some isometric angles. These are the kinds of ideas that are going to inspire the rest of the piece. However, we can't just jump right from one thing to the other. We can't really highlight key moments of a piece if we don't really know what the narrative of that piece is. What is actually going to be happening? Now, some pieces are more visually driven. Others have a voiceover and characters and dialogue and scenes and all sorts of things. There's quite a spectrum of what your piece could actually be. And your specific process may be a little bit different. But after the mood board, two things kind of have to happen simultaneously almost. We need a script of some kind to tell us what is going to happen in this piece, and we need the style frame to tell us what it's going to look like. These two documents kind of have to be generated and play off of each other. You might get a rough outline that then informs some key visual ideas that in turn influences what kind of scenes you're going to do. Alternatively, you could go through an entire script process and then just pick little bits out of that. It really depends if you're going to be visuals first or if you're going to be narrative first. Personally, I like to start with a script and then work from there. So really quickly, here's the script that was created for this project. We're basically trying to show a chess game and how interesting and dynamic it is, which I know is a hard sell for some people, but, but I really enjoy the game. So here is our kind of visual script. I've organized it onto these cards with a bunch of point form bits. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Now these columns are really just outlining sort of the main kind of beats, the main categories of things happen. We're going to establish what's going on, showing some kind of a chessboard, play is about to begin. We're going to have the inciting action of one player starting the clock and moving a piece. We're going to have a reaction to that, where the other player sees the move, maybe looks back and forth from the clock a little bit, and then we move into that player's headspace, where they are going to analyze the situation, do some calculating of scenarios, play out some things in their mind, and then finally take their move. So from this very simple framework, we can start to pick out what are some of the areas that we should probably show in a style frame. If we were making this for a client, what do we need to show them in order to convey the fullness of this piece? So you might think, well, we should get the establishing shot in there, right? That's the first thing people are going to see when they look at the video. That's a good place to start sometimes. And you might think, well, the final shot is important. It's the last thing. It might be the call to action in your piece. So that could be an important part. Where the action is going to be the most most intense 
is also an area to think about. So with all of these calculations, this kind of montage, I think we definitely need to pull something from there, from the mindscape in this case. And we're going to need to convey visually that we've entered into that space, as opposed to the physical space where the two players are. So that's something we need to show. There are also two points in this piece where hands are going to interact with chess pieces on a board. We're definitely going to want to show hands, pieces, this clock makes an appearance. So if you can get those things in the frame together, that'll help inform a lot of the assets we're going to need to make later. So I think those are the big things I want to do. I want to show hands touching pieces, clearly important to the game of chess, and this narrative in general. I want to show transitioning from the physical space into the mental space, and then I want to show something in that mental space. That should be enough to convey the main beats of this piece. So for those reasons, I've selected these. And this should convey, hopefully to the client, enough for them to understand when they read the script, look at these, look at a storyboard, they'll know what the finished product should look like. And that's our goal. So how do we actually go about creating style frames? Well, for this project, I'm working in Adobe Illustrator. That's where I usually make most of my style frames. Typically, when I start, I like to lay out a bunch of artboards. You go file, new, and then when you're creating a new thing, uh, you usually want to work in at least the same uh, frame dimensions. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same size, though. That's really going to depend on how you want to lay these things out. If you're making something in 4K, you don't necessarily need to make style frames in 4K. I think that seems like overkill. We could even be working much smaller with this. You can go ahead and knock out, I don't know, maybe, uh, let's say nine artboards. Then we just go ahead and hit create there. You might be thinking, well, Evan, you only chose three kind of scenes to deal with. Why are we making so many artboards? Well, it's because you usually want to be able to present variations. You want to present different colorways, different levels of detail. You want to show and explore different ways of looking at this. The purpose of the style frame is to communicate where we're going visually, but doing this step is where you decide where we're going to go visually. So this means that you'll probably explore and throw away a bunch of ideas that just don't fit, and you'll present only your best stuff. You might end up taking this in three totally unique ways and then showing the same scene in each one. So that's what I've done here in this example where I'm mixing up colors and levels of detail. I'm just going all over the place. No scientific method here. And we've got different ways of showing the eyeball. Hard corners or totally soft. Levels of detail on the hands. We've got very abstract hands, very realistic hands. You know what? Don't at me about my hand drawing. You have various levels of detail on the chess pieces, and it conveys two different looks. They're similar enough, we're using the same colors, same ideas, but we're representing them in different ways. And this is what you want to explore with the style frames. Now, you might prefer to work in something like Photoshop. Maybe your piece is going to require a lot of brushwork. Maybe it's going to be a composite. You're going to be combining photos and vectors and all sorts of things. You want to just combine them together here in Photoshop. You can definitely do that. Again, you'd want to work with the same frame size. Click this little button here for artboards. I really recommend making that happen. You're you end up with this thing here that says Artboard 1. And now in here, you can go Layer New Artboard, Artboard 2 if you like, and boom, you'll have another artboard hanging out in here that you can draw inside of its folders, keep everything nice and separated. And I really recommend working with multiple artboards at the same time, because it can really help you keep things in the same style. Now, because sitting around and watching me draw things is not super exciting and won't be very applicable to your particular project, once you have your images created, how do we get them from here and put them into a document that's going to convince someone to go along with our vision? We would go ahead and we would just export, export for screens, and you can select all of these and it'll spit them all out as their artboard size. And now we move into presenting them. So what I like to do, create a new board, style frames, Milanote generates SF for us, which is great. And now we would really just go to our hard drive here, we grab all of these artboard images and bloonk, they all come out. And then we just need to organize them a little bit, get organized. I recommend making one of them kind of the focal piece. So if this is gonna be the big one, this is the big important one, we look upon that. Then we just arrange the other ones so they're a little bit symmetrical with each other. Good, good. You can arrange them like that. Milanote has a number of alignment and distribution things you can use, but you want to keep everything organized. This way you can talk about it and your client can talk about it. So for that reason, I like to put a line out, but this just helps us keep them all separated. So we know this is style one, this is style two. You want to be very, very clear about what's happening. Now you might also want to drop in some notes. So you might want to drop out some notes about this style. 
make that a heading, and we would just describe some points about it. So why, so what are ways we can describe this? We would call this, you know, simple, geometric, and abstract. Those are kind of the things that describe this, this style. Again, this comes back to making it conversational for you and someone who's reviewing it. So they could say, this is simple, but too simple. It helps you to kind of define the language. Now we can go in here and with style too, and we can say, this is more organic or natural, or, or this is definitely uh, literal, literal shapes, because these are literally the shapes of chess pieces. This is literally the shape of a hand. It's not really simple anymore. It's more detailed and it has a bit more depth to it, whereas everything up here is flat. So if you're going to be presenting your styles to someone, you might need to go style one, style two, style three. And then when you share this, you want them to be able to comment kind of directly on things. One of the reasons I like Milanote is that people can just drag out a comment. They can say, mm, I shape isn't working. And then you can reply back to that and you can have a conversation about it. So remember, style frames are not only how you communicate the visual direction of a project, it's also how you discover the visual direction of a project. If this were a team situation, other members, the creative director might be chiming in with things. I might present style one and then we derive style two from that, style 1B or style 1.1, on and on like that. However, one caveat I'll say is that if you are doing this work for a client, please put in a provision that you will not be doing infinite style frames. And remember, these are all billable hours also. Hopefully this will be useful in your design process. It's something that really helps me out and helps me interface with clients and teams, gets everybody on the same page and uh, makes for a much smoother project. If you've enjoyed this part two of our pre-production series and you haven't seen part one, check that out and learn about mood boards and stick around for part three, where we talk about storyboards, which is coming up after this, the next step in our pre-production pipeline. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.